All right, so you think you're changing electricity providers and you might have seen adverts for Amber Electricity. These guys who offer a flat $10 per month access fee and well market rates for electricity. That's like wholesale electricity market rates. And better yet, they do it with some renewable power behind them. So on this video, I'm going to share my experience of being with them. And importantly, are they saving me money and well, the environment too. Welcome, my name is Chris and on today's special episode, I'm going to talk to you about my experience with Amber. I'm going to show you the complex bills, costs, and we'll compare them to like several other electrical retailers. And well, PS, this is definitely not a promotion for Amber and nor do they have like copy approval for this story. And yes, I did do like one interview with the co-founder and co-CEO earlier this year. So I've, you can look it up there or follow the link down there. And well, if you'd like to know some more, I've also left a few other comparisons and links for you down beneath. All right, with that said, let's get into this. Since the mid 2000s, we've like paid for green energy from various electricity companies. Back then, costs were about 50% or more than well, the normal sort of base levels. So I must say that it's actually great to see that electricity retailers now, their actual rates for renewable power is only like three to four cents extra per kilowatt hour to go green. So if you haven't looked at it lately, please do because you'll be pleasantly surprised about how much cheaper it is to get your power from more well, green sources. For us, reducing our impact on the environment through renewable energy use is important. I've got like four beautiful kids and a lovely wife, and I want to lead this world to them in well, better shape than the one that I inherited. To do this, we try to use as little power as we can, especially from the Victorian grid where like about 75% of power comes from fossil fuel sources. To minimize our impact, we elect to buy like green power. We have like a Tesla Powerwall 2 to store the energy that we capture from our 4.5 kilowatt solar system. And well, we have energy efficient products throughout our home to keep our electricity use as low as possible. How low? Well, we only use about on average 15 kilowatt hours of power per day. Now, up until recently, we were like with Luma Energy and on average across the whole year, we've had about $120 to $140 per month. Again, averaging costs. Winter and summer, we would use more and in autumn and spring being less than this. So after like more than five years with Lumo and costs escalating year on year by about 10%, I figured it was time to change providers again. And well, I saw these adverts on my socials and I thought, yes, I'd like to pay a lot less for daily access charges and will pay wholesale prices on electricity and will support renewable power. It all sounds like too good to be true, doesn't it? Right? Well, I bit the bullet and I registered my interest in January of 2020. By about mid to late March, I was signed up and transitioned over to Amber Electricity. Now, before I get into the next section, I'm going to forewarn you now. I'm not about to, I'm about to do like a deep dive on their bill. And well, this may take minutes. So if you want to skip to maybe the end bit, use this little skip function that YouTube has, okay? All right, still here? Great. Now, before I get into looking at my bill, which I know you're dying to see, a warning. First, Amber bills are complicated, and I'll try not to make it boring. Second, Bills on Amber change slightly from person to person, depending on what, net you're, on what network you're on, what plan you're on, and if you have like solar or a control load. So the numbers and breakdown on my bill might look different to your bill. Okay, ready? Let's do this. First, you have real-time wholesale usage charges, which are the costs that make up the wholesale price of electricity. It's divided into different line items. First is general usage wholesale. This is like the amount that Amber paid the market, which in turn you pay. Yeah, the specific charges for each 30 minute increment aren't actually included in the bill. Instead, Amber provides an average cost per kilowatt hour of usage. Looking at my bill, 
there are unfortunately two periods covered, which makes it look a little more complicated than what it really is. I guess this is because maybe I joined them uh, mid-month, maybe? Perhaps yours might be different if you say start with them on the first of every month. Maybe. I'm not sure. Amber, please let me know. It would be nice if Amber would like just charge on a very neat calendar month system. Just a little bit of a tip there, guys. So, for the 18 days in June 2020, we use 269.35 kilowatt hours of energy. The general usage wholesale average price was 4.1982 cents per kilowatt hour. That sums to like $11.31. Next is Network Anytime Energy. And this is a charge that Amber pays to the network per kilowatt hour of usage. This changes depending on what tariff you are on with your network. For one month, we use 471.83 kilowatts of energy. That's essentially just 15 kilowatt hours of energy per use per day. Then there's the market charges, which on my bill is weirdly broken into two due to reasons already stated. The charge rate is identical and the amount of energy it used is two. So again, 471.83 kilowatt hours of energy used, costing us 34 cents for this bill. Amber says the market charges are the amount that all retailers pay market operators to run the energy market and provide grid, st grid stabilization services. I guess that's what AMO charge, maybe? Now, can I say, this bill is way more complicated than anything I've ever seen before. And whilst Amber is, I think, being very transparent about how, and importantly, who you are paying money to, it doesn't make it easy to get your head around, no. Moving on, carbon neutral offset is which is the Amber's cost to offset the carbon caused uh, by my grid. Or put it another way, this is where they buy carbon credits to offset the usage from the grid. At 0.11 cents per kilowatt hour, this cost is just 52 cents for this much energy. In tandem with this is like the environmental certificate cost, which is the amount of for purchasing environmental certificates to meet various government schemes. Now, something I didn't know, and actually I thought it was like scrapped by hashtag Ospol, was that these certificates are primarily to support the Australian Renewable Energy Target. Yeah, we've got a red target, who knew? So Amber, and all retailers for that matter, are actually obliged to pay and buy these environmental certificates equal to like a government mandated level, which currently is at 30%, 20%, sorry, 20%. So the cost, $8.56 for June. Now, one of the variables Australians should be acutely aware of is that the wholesale energy cost of electricity can vary significantly from like negative values, that is like if I was to use energy, I'll be paid to use it, to as high as $15 per kilowatt hour. Not 15 cents per kilowatt hour, no, $15 per kilowatt hour. So seen here, this is what wholesale energy market prices are. And these are in megawatts, not kilowatts. Now, this, we don't normally see this as consumers, but when you join Amber, you get some new insight to electricity prices, which vary in the market every half an hour. When I care to take a look at the app for pricing, which I did a lot at first, but now seldom do, I found prices were typically like 14 to 18 cents per kilowatt hour. And a few times I have seen them as high as the mid 30 cents sort of range. This variability of price might not suit some people, but for me, I no longer pay close attention to it and in turn, don't care why what I pay. Why? Well, in Australia, as consumers, we're only allowed to be charged no more than the government mandated default market offer. This dollar amount is like a ceiling price set by the Australian Energy Regulator. There's a link below and AER, they set a limit on electricity prices that retailers can charge electricity prices to consumers. Yeah, so it's a default contract price. So therefore, it makes a wholesale market price variability a non-issue. It's a non-starter. Amber covers this price variability by putting in something they call a price protection hedging, which ensures that dream price spikes, I will not pay above the maximum default market offer. Okay, still with me? We're almost there, ready? Next is wholesale daily supply charge. These are the costs that Amber must pay to supply power to our house. Traditionally, retailers would have like bundled them into like the one daily supply charge or similar. 
Amber, on the other hand, well, they pass them on to you with no retail markup whatsoever. Refreshing, right? Hmm. So, this is one of the reasons that I signed them to Amber was that this promotion of like a flat $10 per month fee, and indeed it really is here, but what I think they maybe should have done is just rolled all those other costs into the one thing. So that's the network fixed charges and fundamental stuff like the poles and wires, which on my bill is 42 cents per day. So combine those two, the appealing fee of $10 per month to cover the admin and running costs for Amber is realistically, realistically 75 cents per day. Now, compared to my last retailer, heck, the last several retailers, that's way far cheaper than what we're used to paying. Okay, so with that exhausting deep dive into Amber Bills 101, how do they compare to competitors? Well, as I stated before in the last section, comparing an Amber Bill to others is not apples for apples. Nope. So I've consolidated Amber's various charges into what we normally see. And well, is this simpler? Wouldn't you agree? Yeah? Now, how does PowerShop compare? The various plans range from like $133 to $193 per month, depending on your usage. And that includes, by the way, a 10% discount, which I'm guessing most people would take up. Next was Energy Australia. And for this, I had to plan, had to use their plan, which mimicked mine as best possible, no control load. And for these, I came out with the best case scenario of $162 on the off peak rate through to $213 for the peak rate. And just one more for the heck of it, and that was Origin Energy, which weirdly has the same supply charge as like the others. Weird, right? Anyway, they came in at $166 per month. I could have done more, but some of them wanted to know my darkest secrets and give away my firstborn child. So I declined to proceed any further with them. But a clear picture is emerging in that Amber tend to be about $30 to $50 cheaper per month at least. Again, I need to stress that if you join Amber, your electricity plan, your choice of renewable power and will costs might look very different to mine. I haven't spoken about the green power offset, grid losses and well, a few other items here. So again, if you want to know more about them, please follow the link that I've left down in the video description. Well, if you've made it this far, you're dying to know, are we happy having moved to Amber? And the answer is, yeah, it's cheaper than what we were paying, but I was actually hoping for even more savings on an electricity bill. You see, for a short while there, I tried to game the variable pricing structure to import electricity into like my Powerwall 2, when it was like at its cheapest. But what this actually meant was that I had to check the pricing in the app several times a day, like typically in the morning, mid-afternoon, and well, sometimes during the evening, looking for the cheapest price and then modifying our Powerwall 2 settings to try to import and store it. But because your relationship to energy changes when you have a Powerwall 2, that is you try to use as much of it when it's generating and that creates like this vicious cycle of you wanting more solar and more battery storage. Hashtag first world problems. It's this simple act of creating and using your own power. It's, it's simply infectious. So after about trying for that a month and having no impact whatsoever on the final cost of my bill, I returned my power wall settings back to cost saving with the highest price in the day. So yeah, trying to make it fill up during the day no matter the conditions. And then after it gets to 15%, you'll then draw power in from the grid into a home when typically prices are already past the peak rates of like, you know, from 5 to 8 p.m. And so that's where our power wall is comfortably covering those times. So before I get into my final thoughts on who Amber might be best suited to, if you've like found this video helpful, enjoy hearing about tech that is helping us to get it to a clean and greener future, please subscribe. It's free. And consider maybe joining us over here on Patreon where you get like early access content, news, polls, Discord discussion groups, and more and more. Okay, wrapping this up. For those worried about paying for more for your power than what you maybe are used to, don't. 
Switching over to amber, prices have been consistently from 14 to 18 cents per kilowatt hour. In the first four months we've had it, I've received just a few notifications saying that surge pricing would hit in a few hours. So that was great, as I could force my Powerwall 2 to charge up and then direct it to supply power to the house whilst prices were at their highest. But again, due to regulations protecting me and well you, electricity wasn't more than like 30 or 40 cents per kilowatt hour and I never really saw that in the bill anyway. So there's nothing crazy here, no. What I don't like about Amber is, well, I think that the bills could use a real cleanup. While some might appreciate the transparency of cost associated, cost associated with providing electricity to your home, I don't. I'd much rather a clean, rolled up, month to month costing, and items which fall into cents per kilowatt hour could be consolidated together. I think for your average consumer with like no solar, no battery, Amber is a no brainer, do it you'll be saving money and while helping the environment. For those with a small to medium sized solar system, thinking like, like three to seven kilowatts, I, would do, I think you'd benefit too. But for those with more than seven kilowatts of solar and a battery, you could actually do better elsewhere. Why? Well, because when renewables are doing well, be it from your own system, but also out there in the massive solar and wind farms, you'll be generating just as much energy as what you can draw in from amber. So the savings just won't be there for you. But for us, I like that ultimately we're saving about $30 um, on average per month. So about $360 per year. And I'm helping to build, well, I'm helping to build a wind or solar farm somewhere. And well, that's an awesome feeling.